In this video, I'd like to answer a question I get asked all the time, which is, John, you read so many books, how do you retain that information? Uh, I've been reading about 100 to 120 business books for about the last 20 years. Uh, so I do a lot of reading. I also listen to probably another 20 or so audiobooks a year. And this is a few tips I have for how to retain information when you're taking in a massive amount of information. So first of all, understand that I read for a specific reason. I'm reading business books looking for things I can teach. So if there's stories or, you know, um, examples that of other companies, I might gloss through those, but I don't read all that stuff. I'm looking for facts, figures, ideas, information. Along those same lines, if I'm reading through a book and I come, on a, come up on a chapter on Andy Grove and Gordon Moore and how they invented Moore's Law. I've read all of Andy's books. I've read a whole bunch of other stuff on this. I just don't read that information. I don't need it. I, I already understand it and know it. So I get to flip through that. So on an average 280 page book, I'm probably only reading 180 or 150 pages of it, which makes it a much shorter book. Another idea is if I get 50 pages into a book and I haven't learned anything, I haven't underlined anything or marked anything, I just stop reading it. I, if it's a hardcover book, I give it away. If it's on my iPad, I erase it. I figure that if an author can't teach me something new and interesting in the first 50 pages of a book, I probably am not going to learn anything in the last 200 pages. So when I do get a book that I really like, and, and here's how I find books that I really like. A, when I'm reading a book by a great author, I look for the books they recommend. When I meet someone I'm extremely impressed with who seems incredibly bright and intelligent, I ask them what their top five favorite books, business books are. Uh, I also uh, have a couple of uh, programs that I listen to, like Audiotech, where I get book summaries. And they're about 10 or 15 minutes, and I will listen to those summaries. If the summary is terrible and the book doesn't sound interesting, I don't buy it. If the summary is pretty good and has a few good ideas in it, I will listen to the summary over, over and over again to learn from it. And if the summary is excellent and the book sounds great, I rush out and buy it right away. So after I've decided to buy a book and I either get it on my iPad or it comes to my house, uh, here's how I approach it. I've always, well, let's, I'll use hard copy. I do the same general idea with the iPad, except for I don't actually underline it with an underliner. <laughs> uh, so I get an underliner pen out and I'm reading the book looking for ideas that either fit a pattern that I know to understand it and get a deeper uh, idea out of that pattern, or I'm looking for brand new ideas I've never seen before that really are thoughtful and I think apply. I underline like a crazy man whenever I see something fantastic. Then I've also developed a number of notes that tell me what I'm underlining. I'll put a pound number for numbers, if it's numbers or statistics. If it's a really good passage, I write a little R and circle it, which means reread. Uh, I put a big Q next to quotes. Uh, I put a big B for recommended books. And I've got a bunch of those things that helps me go back through the book and understand the key ideas that I want to pull out and what kind of ideas they are. Then, after I've finished an entire book that I thought was really good, I've underlined, I've made all those things, I immediately go back to the book and read just my highlighting, highlighting, and then in the very back page of the book or in a journal, I write just the key ideas, the main things. Now, if a book is spectacular, what I will do is go back to my office and I will read it into Dragon Naturally Speaking. I use uh, dictation software and I'll, I'll create an overview of all the key ideas. Then I take that overview and I edit it and clean it up and get even shorter and more tight. And oftentimes I will even add my own comments to that, how, what the idea means to me, how it relates to other ideas and other books I've read and the thinking of other authors. Then if it's really good, I will take that uh, highlight that I have and I will read it into an audio uh, recording and then I will listen to that in my car. So I just don't read it once. I only read the stuff that is new and interesting and applicable to me. I'm reading on purpose. I underline a lot. I have a system for knowing what I'm underlining. I reread my underlining. I create a summary of the underlining. Then I tighten the summary and add comments. Then I record it and listen to it. So trust me, if you do all that, you will remember the key ideas in the book. And I have a slightly photographic memory, but this is a way that, that I see it, I hear it, I read it, I reread it, and by then I've got it down to its essence, 
and I can remember that, and then I can also remember that and apply it to other ideas. So if you're really serious about learning a lot more from books and you want to be able to retain all of the key ideas, this is the system I use. It's in-depth, it's detailed. Don't forget, this is what I get paid to do for a living, and, and I love to read business books, but it's a lot of effort. However, the return is very high because you can recall amazing amounts of information, and that is always good for your career and helping you to run your business and your life better. I hope you found this helpful.